Hello everyone, welcome to another whiteboard testing video. Today I want to talk to you about the jigsaw principle. Now, that's just the name I've given it, it's probably not really a principle, but what it is, is a, a visualisation of how I try to look at automation in the context of testing. So I'm going to try and explain to you what I've drawn, uh, and we're going to start with these jigsaw pieces. So for me, the jigsaw pieces resemble my architecture. All these pieces together is my automation architecture. However, these individual pieces are libraries that I may have sourced from the internet, such as Chakram, JUnit, Rest Assured, WebDriver, or they are libraries that I've created myself, classes that I've built to support the automation that I'm trying to do. Either way, I have one too many of these and they are my architecture. And then what I like to do with these, I like to build them to be completely standalone, isolated, independent. They don't know about one or the other. They don't need each other to, to work. They're self-contained. For example, this one could be data creation code. It doesn't know who's going to use it or what it's going to be used for, but it just knows how to create data. The same for like a logging or a reporting engine. It just knows that it's given information and it's meant to send it out somewhere. So these things are all isolated. And what that allows me to do it allows me to group many pieces to create a tool. But in order to do that, I have to build the plumbing around it. I have to build something that the pieces slot into. So for the example here, the big orange one, these pieces could be WebDriver, JUnit, uh, some reporting library, a utils library that I built, because everyone has a utils library where they put everything else that doesn't fit. Uh, and then let's say a screenshot library or something like that. And then all those pieces together, they form the tool that I use to do my automated checking on the web. That's what all those pieces together. However, I can take one of these pieces and pair it with something else in order to build another tool. For example, this might be JUnit, and this would be something like Chakram or Rest Assured. Something on those lines, and now the red tool could be my API checking tool. So I try and build many tools. For example, this could be data creation. And then if I paired that with some code that I'd written to wrap that in an API, then I've built myself a tool that I can use to create data with. So it's about considering these pieces to be individual pieces, and then I can put them all together with some plumbing, with some frameworks, with some extra pieces in order to create a tool that I can use. And if I can do this with all my code, I can create many tools and I can create them rather quickly. And also I get better value for money. If I spend all my time creating code to create data for my automated checks, I want to reuse that somewhere else. If I write, spend lots of time writing a reporting engine, I want to be able to reuse that in other areas where I might be doing some automated checking or using some different tools. So this is how I see my architecture and my tools. Now the very final piece is the human that's around it. We build these tools to support us, us as humans. We build these tools so that we can use them. We build these tools so that we can take the information that they output so we're always the final piece. We are, they're on their own, they don't do anything. They'll go off and execute. But it's us who processes the information that they give back. It's us who uses the tool to facilitate or support the testing that we're trying to do. So we are the final piece, and that's the most important thing for me. All these tools are designed to support me or my team or members of my team, basically people. So that's what we need to do, and that's why I try to visualize this in such a way that I create individual pieces, I build plumbing, I write code, plumbing code that puts them together in order to create tools which then someone or myself uses to support the thing that I'm trying to do. So that's kind of how I see automation. I called it the jigsaw principle because of the individual pieces and that we build more pieces to slot into and then the final piece is us. We can take the shape of anything we like because we're flexible, we've got a brain uh, and we don't need to be pushed into a certain shape in order to be able to use these tools. So the final piece is us, we can be moulding away, but these individual pieces are designed in such a way that they can be grouped, create many tools, uh, and be used by several people. Uh, so this is it. Um, again, as I said, I gave it that name. It might not be an appropriate name, but hopefully it's of some value to someone. It's a nice way, I find, of visualising my approach to automation. Uh, so I hope you like it. Uh, thank you for watching. Cheers.